the same kind of crap. They keep raising our cost of living and nobody wants to talk about the effect on those that are struggling to keep their heads above water, what that's going to do and how that has a breaking point. And it's something, it's a mathematical statement to say that, okay? Nothing else. It's not conjecture. It's not speculation. It's not opinion. It's a matter of fact that if you do X and you can expect Y, then every time you do that, then you know what you're going to get. It's just a stupid thing that we are tolerating this. And that's what it comes down to. This tolerance, this acceptance, this, oh, they've moved the Overton window and I just have to get used to it. It's me. It's my problem. We got social Darwinian economics that are the rule of the day. If you can't keep up with the Joneses, there's something wrong with you. It's your problem. Maybe you need, instead of one job, take two. And if two jobs doesn't do it, you better make three. You better get three because they're going to keep raising the bar, keep raising your cost of living, keep making it necessary that you got to make more and more and more numbers. So you pay this thing that's innocuously called a, a cost of living, right? Which is a euphemism for a tax on your very existence. Your right to survive is taxed and they call it a cost of living. And then we point fingers at the multi-billionaires and say, oh, Donald Trump and Warren Buffett and Carlos Slim and Bill Gates, these are the richest men in the world. And then we don't talk at all about, well, who's holding the copyright to the money, okay? That's what I want to talk about. Who's holding the copyright to the money? I want names. I want faces. I want to know who it is, okay? Because in my book, they're called infinite heirs, okay? Forget the multi-billions. That's, that's chump change compared to what these people have. They've got all the wealth of the nation, the planet, in perpetuity, okay? Forever. You get it? You get how this thing works? And I want to know, when we talk about government property and public property and all this, I want to know who they're talking about. I want names. I want faces. Okay? Let's get real. Let's get honest. That's the big problem. The stuff I talk about doesn't take a great deal of intelligence to figure out that I know what I'm talking about. Okay? It's not an intellectual argument I make. It's one of logic and reason and mathematical equations. And I can prove everything I talk about and teach and preach. It's all there in black and white. So I know what the hell I'm talking about. I know how to define progress in terms of free market supply and demand capitalism. And what's been shoved down our throats since the assassination of JFK, the coup, the money printing coup, okay, is anything but. It's the opposite of free market supply and demand capitalism. I know what happens. I know how you define progress in regard to supply and demand. The worth of your currency goes up, 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 up. And that's what they're deathly afraid of, that everybody's going to figure that out. The big lie, okay, because then you'd see there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And you'd say, oh, my God, where does this leave? If we bring this out, we extend this out. Okay, where does it go? I'll tell you where it goes. It makes it so that money becomes totally irrelevant. Nobody even cares about it. We serve each other because we've got a God-given instinct not to be self-serving, decadent, slovenly, lazy, piss ants. Okay, people want to be appreciated. They want to be useful. Okay, that's a matter of fact. A man isn't content. Read what King Solomon said about this. He said the most gratifying thing a man can do with his life is to spend it and working for other people, doing, serving. Okay, that's it. That's all we have. That is the best thing we can do with our lives is to give it in service to our fellow man. King Solomon said this thousands and thousands of years ago, and that's still true today. So there's no way the system would break down if everybody on earth was prosperous. If it was understood that, hey, this earth belongs to you too. It belongs to me. It belongs to him, her, all of us. Who said so? Not because some man said so. No, because God said so. It's yours. You are born unfathomably wealthy. Do you understand? That's the only reality that's worth a damn. 
Okay, get it through your heads, everybody. Stop being idiots. Stop being dishonest idiots. Because like I said, it doesn't take a great deal of intelligence to figure out the stuff I'm saying. And what, I, what I'm saying is real. And you can check it out with mathematical principles. Okay, but the fact is, is that we don't need a gaggle of merciless hypocrites running our lives and creating the policies we all have to live under. Colon cancer has been surging among young adults in their 30s. And I just did a bunch of research recently on this high fructose corn syrup. This stuff is creating your intestines. It's making people's intestines get soft and gushy and mushy and putting holes. And it's so there you get bowel, you got this leakage going on, this intestinal leakage going on. And then you're wondering people are eating their red meat and all this, and it sits in there longer than it ought to. And, uh, and so you wonder why you're getting colon cancer, wonder no more. Do your own independent research. This high fructose corn syrup is poison. Read about it. They're making it from the stalks of the GMO corn. And they're using mercury in the processing. So you're drinking mercury, a deadly toxin. They're feeding this to people and the FDA is silencing. Oh, it's generally recognized as safe. They don't say, Oh, well, you should keep it to X amount of ounces a day, they don't say, but, you know, I can drink two quarts of this stuff a day, and, and uh, you know, I feel okay until all of a sudden you're not okay. You end up with diabetes. Every other person today has got diabetes. Is that not true? And then we wonder what the hell's going on, and then we're going to pick on the smokers. Tobacco's been around since the beginning of time. You think they're going to get people to quit smoking by make, raising the price? How long before everybody starts growing their own damn tobacco and circumventing the tax man? What are you going to do? And what's paying for these programs? Now you got all this, this revenue you're getting from the problem? That's how the system works. How many people's jobs revolve around the problems persisting? If the problems ever went away, my God, everybody would be unemployed. Am I making stuff up? No. It's, it's, it, it's unnerving. It's untenable. I can't stand it. That's the establishment I live on. All these people going off to their neo jobs, their neo careers, which simply means new. They didn't even exist. We had no use for those jobs even a hundred years ago, and certainly not a couple hundred years ago. But all these people are doing these jobs and they revolve around the problems. It would be incalculably cheaper to just solve the damn problems, folks. Just solve extreme desperate poverty, crime would plummet and almost dry up overnight. Do you understand? That's a fact. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Dubious war. You know how much harder it is to get guys into go to these wars they don't even believe in where we got 20 guys a day taking their own lives now? That didn't happen in the Second World War. What the hell's going on here? What the hell's going on? It's about money. What Eisenhower said, it's a business. They're running it like a business. They need skirmishes and conflicts to be relevant, to make profit. You understand how this thing works? It's perverted, it's sick and twisted, it's evil. And then let's look at the, the debt industrial complex. We got 25% of Americans purportedly working in the uh, financial services industry to some capacity. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? So all of a sudden, nobody's poor. Nobody needs to borrow money. They can save up enough money to buy their own damn house and pay cash. So we don't need money lenders anymore. Think of all those jobs. All those people can go do productive things. Building houses, okay? That sort of thing. Fixing potholes, that sort of thing. You ever notice how the government has plenty of money to do what they want? Give themselves raises, for example. But when it comes to fixing potholes in your town, Oh no, well, you need to raise your taxes. Maybe your, your property values need to go up and your taxes need to go up, right? Everybody is like they're under, a, they're mesmerized by these people. They're just dumbed down. I don't understand, but I just thank God I'm not. And I would encourage everybody to take what I'm saying to heart and understand, I know what I'm talking about here. Just imagine the vast swath of Americans that would be unemployed tomorrow if you had just ended desperate poverty. It costs $50,000 a year to keep one guy in jail in California for a year, over 50000 
And the main driver of that guy ending up in prison was because he was desperately poor. Do you understand? That's what induced the criminal criminality, the criminal behavior is induced by extreme poverty. Do you understand this? Do you understand all the people that are employed in the social welfare industry in America? Do you understand that if you ended desperate extreme poverty, all those people would be unemployed? They depend on people being desperately poor, not being able to house themselves, not being able to feed themselves, not being able to pay their utility bills. Do you understand? So I hope you do because anybody that's been listening to me for any appreciable amount of time, I know you understand, but I just, I'm sorry, I get on rants and I'm just not in the mood. I just drove down here 180 miles from Chico and, uh, you know, it just grates on me. It, it, you know, it wearies me to have to hear these idiot people on the mainstream media. The mainstream media just sickens me to my core, okay? I don't like it. These people are supposed to be the cutting edge educators, okay? But we're getting malinformation, misinformation, maleducation, okay? So it's no wonder that people don't know what the hell's going on. And no wonder people are so stupid and ignorant and confused about everything. And they're scared to have an intelligent conversation with a guy like me because I, they know I'll blow their socks off. I know what the hell I'm talking about. So please listen, folks, please. And then grab somebody and say, listen, you're going to listen to me. I'm going to tell you how it is. And the only way you're going to disagree with me is if you're dishonest. Because like I said, this is not an intellectual argument I make. I know what I'm talking about here. I've learned from the greats. Probably the greatest economist the world has ever seen is Adam Smith. Understand what he said. He pointed out every nation's single greatest asset is a willing workforce. And who could say we don't have a willing workforce? You take it to its limits. You create prosperity in the land across the board until the system doesn't work. You'll have to prove that to me because there's never been a period in history when the rulers of this world, these miserable money masters of misery, Okay, when they've ever allowed people to be free. And the way they keep people enslaved is through the money. This is the whole satanic principle behind it. This is the power of Satan. Satan and that spirit thereof and all these minions, witting and not, would be all rendered irrelevant, neutered, castrated. You understand? They'd have no power over anybody without their precious money. And you understand the price you're paying to have that money? Do you understand the dubious war, 500,000 dead children, Iraqi children? Do you understand the price you're paying for your precious money? My God, help us. God, help us. Do you understand the damage, the homeless people dying out in the cold, all this invented, artificial, unnatural suffering? That's what I'm talking about. So you want to talk to me about a minimum guaranteed income? Let's talk. Let's talk about checks and balances and oversight and accountability by we the people, which is constitutional. Not we some of the people aren't going to get our way. No, we all the people. You want to talk about entitlements? Who was entitled to that 2008 bailout when these people intentionally brought down the system? They knew they were going to blow the pipes out of the economy. Did that stop them? No, it didn't stop them. So who are they to get their bailout? These highfalutin, high-ranking politicians are criminals. Them and the money masters, the money printing class, they should all be in jail. Well, I'm, uh, I'm about done here. I've got a place to be and I got to get going, but uh, I'm going to read more from, I covered the uh, current events. I guess I didn't have a lot to talk about this last week, but I still have a lot of thoughts. So. I think I'm going to do a little more either tonight or maybe in the morning, but I got my daughter's wedding to think about. And I'm pretty excited about that. It's going to be a lot of fun, you know. I'm really happy about that. I got the best daughters in the whole world. Lucky man. I'm a very lucky man, but, uh, you know, anyhow. I get passionate and I hope anybody can forgive me because I'm not yelling at any person in particular. I'm yelling at ideas and precepts and principles, evil ones, this spirit, the attitude of the satanic attitude that prevails in the land and people just don't get it and their minds are just in another place and I see it all over the place.
but we've got to be we've got to be good Philadelphians. We've got to be good humanitarians. We've got to give a crap about other people's problems, even if we don't think they affect us. They do affect you because you've got this thing called the conscience, and you can't escape it. God built it into you. It's a default. It's a fail-safe, and you should thank God for your conscience. Thank God for your honor. Thank God for your integrity. And uh, until we talk again, have a good one. I'll give you a little, another little view of the